Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. I recovered my absolutely most favorite pair of earrings that my mother-in-law, June Duffield, gave me probably over 35 years ago. And I've lost them twice, Jeff Duffield, two times, and have recovered them both times. Well, was this Uh, latest issue, (laughs) was it a loss? No, it wasn't. Or just a, let's see how I want to say this. Just absent-mindedness, well, it, perhaps. Yeah, and as I, as I, really, really grieved the process. I have to tell you, I thought I took it off at night when I only realized I only had one <laughs> in my ear. Well, it's quite. You said something the other day that you thought you only put on one. That's well, right. But you probably had both on. You're no, pretty good at No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, I think so. Because you said you came home and you took them off. Yeah, and, but that's not... And, you know, I may have said something to you. Yeah, but here's the real deal. Where the earring was, was a great indicator to me that I had not put the other one on that morning. Well, then maybe the same See? thing happened. You put one on... <laughs> And the phone rang, or, or I, I got said distracted something. by you, probably. Of course, let's you always be, distract me, sure. and I, I'm going one direction, and you say, "Come here a minute, yes. I want to show you something." Yes, of come course. over here to the computer. Look at sure. this. Oh, did you see this on your on the phone? Yes. Oh, come yes, over yes. here. I want you to. So what happens is let's I get this. Blame distra- it on the old man. <laughs> blame it on the piano player. Yes, it's so yes, much yes, easier yes, to yes. do that when you lose something. Yes, but anyway, yes, yes, yes. All is right with the world. I found my treasured. That's the main birthstone thing. diamond earring from your mother, your and I'm mother, so glad. Yeah. Yes. I remember though that you weren't too happy with yourself recently. Oh, any day of the week. Yeah, you lost that really nice sport jacket we got at Men's Warehouse. Well, well that's actually been a while ago, but yes. I and I don't have any idea. We have no idea. We've tried. We've called. I know churches. I had it. I know I owned it because I've got pictures of me wearing it. I know. It. And the last time we have a picture of you wearing it was at a wedding. So I, you know what I did? I went back and called the church just in case when you were changing because hmm. we are known to do that. Yeah, but we've done, we've changed clothing in hundreds, I know. if not thousands of churches in our lifetime. That doesn't matter. We're older it, now. And we're but forgetting I things. But I didn't leave. <laughs> I didn't leave the slacks. No, that's what I'm saying. I, maybe you took it off, laid it on a pew. I mean, I don't. Now know that's what you more did. of if 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 that's in fact what happened. That's more likely there because I've been known to yeah. take a jacket off to tear down sound equipment, lay it on a on a pew, and almost forget it. Right, and then you lost your Bose headphones on an airplane. No, I didn't lose them in a hip play. I think I left them oh. in that hotel in Florida. Oh. See, here's what I'm going to start doing with you. Wait a minute. Listen, I'm going to no, know. You remember, remember when you went to grade school and your mother would write little, uh, your name on your clothing? Um, no, she never did that because <laughs> I never took my well, clothing off. Well, my mother was very efficient. Good for your mother. And if, if found, please return to Sue Beatty. See? Well, that gene did not pass <laughs> along to you. <laughs> No, I know. You can't get out of the car. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's a trait you have. Okay, first of all, the minute you get in the passenger side, you flip down the the the, the visor. I just want to make sure that my lipstick's on right. You, all day. <laughs> A hundred miles down the road, well, you're still and checking, it, and you flip up that vanity mirror with the lights on it, and that the light. That's a, as I, I guess it's amazing. Car companies made them to last longer than I think, because I'm surprised you haven't burnt those light bulbs out. The <laughs> other thing you do is when you exit the automobile, you get out, you le- you open the passenger door, and then if you have something to get out of the back seat, yes. 
You leave the front door open. I forget to and you, close the passenger door. And you and you get out and you walk to the back of the car. And then we walk and away the and the door is still open. I know. I know. I'm I'm re- but here's the thing. You, if you I was that, married to a that all the chivalrous man who would open my door I've for me. I've got my hands full with the other <laughs> stuff that you want me to bring <laughs> and not forget. You got out the other day. We were pulling up to, we had to go to the back of the complex here, and he had to go through a security gate. Yes. And I got, you got out and said, oh, no, we don't have to, we came through the side entrance, and you said, we don't have to go out and come back in. Here, just let me get the the fob, and I'll go over there and beep it. And you jumped out, and you left the car. And then you left your your door open and you're standing and you over couldn't there going go like, through the gate. drive through drive through <laughs> your car door is open. I know, but I haven't lost as the my auto sense says, of humor. As the auto have says, we lost our sense of humor? No, well, maybe no, one no, of no. Us maybe, but don't. as as the message says on the car dashboard, door ajar. A door is ajar. Yes. No, a door is a door. It's not a jar. Well, you know what I'm saying. That's an old joke. Uh, but listen, listen. Li- listen. I, we're I'm talking trying. about things that we've lost. Yes. Now, there are a lot of times as we get older, we're learning yes. that we have to recount our steps. Yes. And think thoroughly before we walk out of this apartment. Or when we have the thought to do something. Do it right, right then, then and there. Right. Yeah. We're learning that. Slowly but And surely. keep your mind sharp. And, take, and take your Rivera pills. What, and, what's the name of those things <laughs> that I take? Nareva. R- Nareva, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that, that works. And we've, we've talked about that a hundred times. <laughs> I just can't take remember them. the name of the pill that we're taking I don't the, read the memory. label. I don't read the label. <laughs> you tell me it's good for my head. I just take it. Once a day, a little capsule, I and it, I take it with my protein protein drink. Yeah. And um, then, and, yeah. Well, Actually, you, I think it's helping. I honestly think... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't leave. I, hey, I didn't misplace my earrings. <laughs> no, no, but I, I honestly think it's been helping recently. Now, I, I think it took a while. Oh, those things, you know, whenever anything holistic like that, it's not like an immediate. It, you, no, your body it has to, has to adjust. Up. Right. Because right. Here's, here's where I noticed it back a few months ago. People from way back that in our history, I could rem- I could see their face but I could not recall oh, their name. Face recognition is easier to, to remember than names. No e- doubt. Evidently. <laughs> However, after several months of the Rivera re- review, whatever. N- Noriva. Noriva. That's him, him too. <laughs> of taking these capsules. I'm now finding it you easier. Are. It is. To it's not happening. only recall the face yes but to recall the name oh i'm so proud of there you i know and i'm happy so well there's a fascinating story that we you and i experienced okay not only i lost an ipad on a southwest jet and yes, i also you lost did. my journal yes remember you did. yes and i lost I my columbia jacket at a gate of a southwest all three of those treasured items of mine Different intervals, yes, all returned. And some, well, you were very fortunate. I was very fortunate because and somewhere in London, England, <laughs> is a jacket of is yours. A, is a warm-up jacket of mine. <laughs> a I nice have blue Nike one. Navy I might Navy blue. Say. There must be something about me in navy blue jackets. <laughs> But uh, I have the pants. Yeah. I still, and that's like eight or nine years ago. Oh, my. The pants are still here. They are still but here. But somewhere in Heathrow Airport, oh, lost and found. Oh, boy. If, if it's not in a trash somewhere. Yeah. By I'm now. I'm so sorry, honey. I just, I, was, I took it off because I was warm. Somebody needed it more than you. I, the lost and found people, I guess. <laughs> And I stood up. It was time to go. And I was heading back to America. America. And I wanted to get on that plane because I was ready to go home. Yes, you were. And I grabbed everything else that I had with me, briefcase or whatever it was I had. But I left my jacket there and did not realize it until I'd gotten across the pond. See you. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Well, not only are we capable as human beings, Jeffrey, mm-hmm. to lose things. That you do there are- remember my name. That's nice. <laughs> There are times that we can lose uh, the concept of our our world, or we can lose lose iconic things, or we can lose memory of of great things. And here's an example: you and I witnessed this. Uh, remember, we were talking with a young man who I would say was in his twenties, and we asked him 
first of all, he I think we were playing a Stevie Wonder song, and he said, I've never heard that song before. And then you said, have you ever heard of Stevie Wonder? And he was like, what, 25? Maybe. And he said... Never heard of him. I almost fainted. And I said... What? You, you, well... I won't say where he's from. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Well, he just didn't know who the state Stevie he, Wonder was. The state he lives in, let's say Stevie's not done a lot of concerts there. But even let's so. Say, I know. What, I, said, I, I asked him, I not? said, have you grown up under a rock? Right, right. You know, I mean, gosh, Stevie Wonder, you got to know who Stevie Well, and Wonder then here's is. my thought. My thought was, he didn't. how can, seriously, a global musical icon like Stevie Wonder be... Missed, even forgotten over a 50-year period. Well, not forgotten, never learned. No, never learned about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, He just didn't listen to that type of music. No. I guess. I don't know. I, w- I was rather stunned. Well, and if it can happen with not our culture, the younger ones, if they don't learn about what I would think would be popular music, what else aren't they being taught? Oh, So my. that's kind of the direction I'm going to go today, and I'm oh going to be very controversial today. My. Rack it up today. It's going to be controversy. My. Don't lose your treasure. I'll, I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to go get my soapbox, <laughs> and we can stand on it. Well, here's what I want to say, and you can add to this, or you can distract. I'm going, or, to, or, I'm going to distract. Or, or, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> How about if I re- just remain silent? Okay. I'm, I'm going to try my best to sit here and just sit Well, here. You, you can stay with me for a minute. No, no, no. no, no, I, no. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, good, good, just, good. Don't go anywhere. I never go anywhere. I'm here from the beginning to the end. I'm the Alpha and Omega, Omega, Omega <laughs> engineer. I'm here for the long haul. Alpha and I'm Omega. In it, I'm in it. <laughs> I'm glad that Nariva is working for you. <laughs> no, there's, there's nothing on that bottle that says it helps with pronunciation I, of words. Well, that's true. Yeah. If Go it ahead. can happen to people, and if it can happen to ideas, it can also happen to lessons, and it can happen in, to history. Yes. People who just totally oh. don't want to learn about oh. it or oh, are not exposed me, to it. Don't get me started on history. And so this, think of it, think about this for one second. You know, we really shouldn't be surprised at what we're seeing in our culture right now. No. Truthfully. No, not at all. No. There are many, and I mean many longstanding standards and staples and mores, how you like that word? I'm impressed. Of human life that have been forgotten, and I use this word, they've been literally obliterated. And they're being in the process of being pasted over by a new wave of ethics. Yep. Alleged ethics. Yeah. And new teaching and new cultural rewrite. Yeah. I am seriously thinking, Jeffrey, I am going to write this song called Cancel Culture. Okay. It's coming. Okay. I'm working on it. Okay. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. That sounds like a good because idea. Because first of all, cancel culture is a movement that is so completely out of touch. I mean, they think they're current, but they really aren't. They're really, really out of touch. May I submit to you for your consideration and edification? Yes, you history breath major. <laughs> I was so impressed with that question that I forget what I was going to say. <laughs> no, may I submit to you that this is a form, if, as we call it, reverse legalism. Yes, in truth, it is. We were told, you know, we we are that Oreo generation. Right, the we, sandwich, we, yes. Uh, we have been around long enough to remember, quote unquote, the way it was and the way things used to be. And then at the same time, we're dealing with the way it is. Right. You know, as they say, what it is. Now, if you know that one, you've been around for a while. <laughs> you get right. that, that phrase. But yeah. anyhow, we're in that middle part that we... we relate to both sides one way or the other and we grew up in a time when in church you had piano and organ well and you that's, didn't have bass you didn't right. have guitar god are, knows you didn't have drums well it's archaic for most and that's but we that's how we grew up yeah but now we know that there is a there's a new way of, of worship and we love it it's yeah, not that, a bad that, thing that, that, that's not that, that that's not what i'm that's not what the point i'm making the okay. point i'm making is back then the if you call it legalism was yo know, you, you know i was told in your church one sunday i i wasn't dressed appropriately 
by one individual who, because I had a dress shirt on, I had a tie, I had a suit on, but it I had wasn't a, dress. a white shirt. It though. was not a white shirt. Oh. We've been told our hair was, my yeah. hair oh, was too you, long. Oh, you radical thing. I understand. <laughs> uh, you know, I was told that I played the piano too jazzy. I know. Uh, by a minister quite known to you. Um, and he's, he likes me now, but back then he thought I was well, too jazzy. And, and, and so I'm anyway, going to talk about Now we're flipping it around. That was, right. we considered that legalism back yeah, in the day. Right. Now we're coming around that, you know, that we can't, we can't publish Dr. Seuss books. Oh, well, that's, that's not get, that's not get to Medlin now. But at the same time, <laughs> we take, we snuff out babies' lives before they're right. born. He didn't say that. Yes, he did. All right. Well, listen, Jeff Duffield, you're yes. done for the day. I'm just getting started. No, no, no. And now, if you want to add uh, some things as I go along here, I gotta get this. I gotta get this parallel oh, story. You, oh, you got a lot of time, here. Mr. <laughs> Clock Watcher, in here. You got, you got all kinds of time left. Well, there is an interesting story in oh, the Bible. Let me let me let me oh, say goodness. one more thing. See, this is what happens when See, you, this is what happens when you when don't you, pay the guest host. No, this is what happens when you get me started. Let me say one more thing. This new thing in the current events that we're seeing all over the internets oh, oh, and the all internets? over, yes. yes, and all over our streaming TV channels yes. about how certain representatives of ours in our nation's capital want to change the law to add members of the Supreme Court. Ooh. And so many of us appear, at least, give appearances to. Oh, this is a new idea. Mm -hmm. If you bothered to read your history book, I'm telling you. you would know it was tried almost 90 years ago. And it failed back then because it was a bonehead idea, yeah, like somebody said in 1983, who now sits in the White House. But I'm done. So if you don't if you don't know who Stevie Wonder is, how in the world would you exactly know that? Exactly right? my point. I'm telling you. Those who ignore history are condemned to repeat those mistakes. That's right. Anyway, now I'm done. Okay. You may go ahead and, and uh, offer your elucidations. <laughs> And commentary on your thoughts that you've already well. Prepared. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, un kind of like redo uh, a brief teaching that I did at a retreat back in 2011. Can you imagine that? I don't know if I can remember I back know. that far without and my pills. I'm just going to give them the, the, the Reader's Digest version. I can't do a three-session retreat in one podcast episode. No, but, this is the Reader's Digest version. But you've got approximately 12 to 13 yes, minutes. Yes, I think I can do it. I Go. think I can do it. All okay, right. Goodbye. So we're talking about an interesting parallel in the Bible. It does reflect. It does reflect what's going on right now. This is why the Stevie Wonder effect and the you know the supreme court effect the, the people that don't know history and don't understand what a treasure we have in what god has created within us we are destined for doom if we don't understand the cultural shift and what happens within a couple of generations and one of the 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 stories involves one of my favorite characters in the bible and that's josiah from second kings 21 and 22 josiah always intrigued me because he comes on the scene Get this, as an eight-year-old boy king of a Jewish southern kingdom, and Judah, based in Jerusalem, and his great-grandfather was Hezekiah, he was a great king who reigned for about 29 years, and it says, good kings in the Bible are those that did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. That's what was considered to be a good king. And his grandfather, Manasseh, was an evil king who then reigned for 55 years, 10 years co-regent with his father. And what is said about the notorious Manasseh is the following. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominable practices of the nations whom the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. This is what he did. He erected altars for Baal and Asherah, which was a Canaanite pagan god, a mother goddess of fertility. I think I pronounced her name right. Asherah. And he burned his son as an offering and practiced soothsaying and dealt with mediums and wizards. Unbelievable stuff. He seduced the people to do more evil than the nations had done whom the Lord destroyed before the people of Israel. And that comes from 2 Corinthians 21, 2 through 9. You can check that out. Prove me. Check it out. You see, Manasseh's son, Josiah's father, Ammon ruled for only two years before he was killed by the servants in his house. And he, too, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the idols 
that his father Manasseh served and worshiped them. Now I'm building this little story up a little bit more in detail for you so you're going to get to the last point here and understand it clearly. Quite a legacy to live up to or move away from. (laughs) King Josiah reigned 31 years as a good king who did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in all the ways of David his forefather and did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. But it was in his 18th year of reign at the age of 26 that he made a discovery that triggered a spiritual reformation in his own life and subsequently in the nation he ruled. And here's what happened. He oversaw a construction repair project of the Holy Temple in the kingdom's capital city of Jerusalem. And while this repair work was being done, an old copy, get this, an old copy of the Book of Law which was actually an Old Testament scroll, most likely a copy of Deuteronomy, given his response, they say, was found and brought to the king, and it was read in his presence. And his reaction was dramatic. He tore his clothes. It was a known expression of grief and anger. And after realizing how far from its teachings the people of Judah had strayed, and then after the dire consequences for their national disobedience was spelled out to him, By one of God's prophets, this is what the Lord said, I'm going to bring disaster on this place and its people according to everything written in the book the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made. My anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Wow. Undaunted, Josiah set in motion a comprehensive set of reforms, and he started with a public meeting, a scriptural reading of the text throughout the region of Judah, and a city of Jerusalem to unite and awaken the people to the darkness that had infiltrated their culture. King Josiah transformed the kingdom to once again honor and worship the Lord until his death, because he knew history. Wow. Unfortunately, over the next 23 years, his own two sons, one grandson and an uncle, oversaw the exile of the Jewish nation and full destruction of the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. At the hands of the Babylonian Empire led by King Nebuchadnezzar, treasure lost and found. Hmm. Now the lesson for this nation or any nation is, is not to lose the treasure, which is the word of God. Can you say amen to that? Praise God. Don't lose the Holy Scriptures. Don't lose this treasure. Don't lose the Bible. Don't lose that inspired word of God given first to the Hebrew nation, but then also to the entire world, even to the Gentiles. And no, God will not be mocked. Man, I'm fired up about this because I see it over and over again. He knows obedience, and he knows ultimately how to punish disobedience. And under Josiah, for only 13 years, the kingdom of Judah lived in obedience to God. However, true to God's word and promise, they were decimated after the end of Josiah's reign. Boy, if that doesn't run cold in my blood today. God-fearing leaders and nations matter. May all nations discern their own state of obedience and disobedience in light of the treasure that has been handed down and clearly unveiled for us. We should have our eyes open, not just to know who Stevie Wonder is, and not just to know what the Constitution and the Supreme Court says, but have you found the ultimate treasure? 2 Kings 23, 25 says, Neither before nor after Josiah Was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did? And with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his strength, in accordance with all the law of Moses, he didn't lose his treasure. What woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me! I have found the coin that I have lost. And Jesus said, Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. 
rejoicing over a coin is nothing compared to rejoicing over a sinner who comes to Jesus. You see, Jesus understands the joy of a woman who lost her coin. And indeed, the angels rejoice over one sinner who turns to God in repentance because they don't need to lose their treasure anymore. We all sin against God, and sometimes we may feel too ashamed to return to him. The enemy wastes no time in telling us how rotten we are. Oh, man, is he good at that. And if we listen to him long enough, we believe it. And we end up withdrawing from God and maybe from his people as well. We've seen that in this seclusion and sequestering that we went through and this, you know, isolation. Many people have returned to the Lord as we've seen online. It's been incredible. But then there's also been several, as we're finding out through statistics, that have walked away from church, have walked away from their faith, have closed their Bibles shut during this, whatever we would call the scamdemic, as Mario Merlo says. Anyway, all that to say, don't lose your treasure and don't let Satan rob and lie to you a minute longer. The Lord is waiting with open arms to welcome you, and there is no doubt about it. So, Jeff Duffield, if you're still with me. I never left. I'm so glad you are. I don't ever want you to lose your greatest treasure. And I promise you this, I will be on guard for you as you are on guard for me, that our reminder is our greatest treasure is the Word of God. Our greatest treasure is our relationship with Jesus. And so we get so distracted and we get so bombarded with different voices and different kind of things that come our way. May we stand strong and may we remain true to God's word and his promise. And man, I don't want to be decimated. I don't want to be like the rain after Josiah was king. What happened? Because they refused to keep their eyes on God. I'm afraid, truthfully, the more information that you and I get, Jeff, the more information that we hear and the more that we go behind the scenes and hear from people like General Michael Flynn, and we hear from many different voices right now that are not having a social media voice like they should, that we're getting so caught up into a different dimension of what we're being taught. It's no wonder Our generation now is not going to probably know who Mario Murillo is or who any of these, you know, Mike Lindell is. And I'm not trying to get political here, but it's very easy to squelch these names in this culture, the men who stand up for God. And what I want more than anything in this podcast, sure, we want to entertain. And yes, we want to make you laugh. And yes, we want to have a ton of fun. And we are into our 49th episode But it would be so hard for me to stand before God one day and he look at me and say, what did you do with that podcast? What value was it? Did it change people's hearts? Did it change people's lives? Did it bring an example of Christ into their homes and into their ears? And if I can stand before them and say, thank you, God. Yes, I did the best that I could. I'm praising the Lord for that. But I want to be held accountable as well being true to God's word and his promise, being obedient, and also remaining true no matter what. And I don't ever want to lose that treasure. Thanks for tuning in to the Subiquitous Podcast. Yeah, we preached a lot today. Woohoo! I'm sorry, but man, sometimes it's in there and sometimes it has to come out. But one of the ways that you have been so helpful to us as we branch out and also as we bless other ministries and And by far, as we're going into a little bit more of a public and uh, venue display, I've got a few retreats coming up in the next several months and a few women's events. And I'm praising God that doors are opening again. However, nowhere near what it was back in 2019 and nowhere near what it was like back in 2011 when I did this retreat that I spoke about this theme today. But all the more the reason that I'm speaking now more to online and presence and people than I ever have in person. And one of the ways that you can keep us on the air is by getting on SueDuffield.com. Thank you for being a patron. Thank you for going to Patreon.com forward slash SueDuffield. And thank you for keeping this ministry going and going 
and we love you more than ever. I love you this much. This is how much I love you. I love you this much to tell you, don't lose your treasure. Don't lose your treasure. That, my friend, is the word of the day. We'll see you next week.